Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Amjir Pestridge. Welcome to another P3D video. Today, we're going to be going through the VFR and IFR settings for uh, the 5.2 um, patch, so uh, or update, whatever you want to call it. Um, so if you're flying in a commercial jet or if you're flying in a Cessna, you're, you're going to want to take advantage of uh, a different setup each time. And then that way you can get the best visuals out of uh, your sim. Now, uh, this is the second part in like a trilogy of videos where in the next video, I'm going to go through my um, P3D CFG and the volumetric cloud CFG. Um, both files uh, will be available in my Discord down below um, when that video comes out. And I will put the IFR and VFR uh, CFG files in my Discord for this video. So you can go in and you can grab those um, those files. And uh, yeah, basically profiles are the best way to achieve whatever desired frame rate you want, no matter where you are in the world. So currently I've got um, some flights to do around you know, Florida and I've got True Worth Florida there and I've got Miami and it can be quite a heavy hitter. So um, I do actually have a True Earth, um profile here that I could use if my VFR one um, isn't cutting the mustard. So um, you really want to tune your settings to whatever add-ons you're using, uh, wherever you're flying in the world, and, and just create profiles. And then that way, you can be assured you're going to get whatever frame rate you wish to get. So for this video, we're going to go through the VFR ones. So VFR, Visual Flying Rules, which means you're going to be down low, below 9,000 feet, which means you're going to want to see every single tree, building, house, um, you know, car, everything. So the real important thing really is your vegetation densities and your uh, scenery complexity. Now, scenery complexity, I would always recommend maxing out no matter where you are um, or, or knock, knocking it down to the very dense one below. Um, and that's really just to take advantage of the entire range of an add-on. Some add-ons, depending on where this slider is setting, uh, or set, depending on where this slider is set, will depend on how much variety of that add-on or how much that add-on is actually put into the sim. So you could put like a little bit of the add-on in, or you could put you know sort of like half of what it can do, or you can max it out and it'll give you everything your add-on will do. Um, but it's these two density sliders which are going to determine how much trees and foliage are going to go in. And if you're flying down below 8,000 feet, you really want to see your landscapes. So make sure I would say your mesh resolution is either at 1 or 5, depending on what kind of PC you've got. The texture resolution, there is absolutely no point in ramping this up to 7 centimeters because this, this slider here is for your landscapes. It doesn't affect airports. And a lot of airports do come in at 7 centimeters per pixel, but... Uh, this texture resolution slider is for your landscape areas and the highest quality landscape is mega scenery which has 50 centimeter uh, per pixel um, resolution and there's no other you know texture resolution add-on that goes you know even higher quality than that so you know 60 or 30 is actually all you'll ever need and you'll get great visuals um, by pumping it up to seven centimeters you're kind of just increasing what your pc needs to do to display the texture in the sim um, and 30 will display it at its full resolution um, mesh resolution now unless you're running the fs pilots uh, mesh um, which runs in at one meter per pixel then you can actually set this down to 10 and still see great sharp mountains. If you do have that FS Global Mesh, you can run this at one and you'll see every crispy little detail um, and uh, it will it will run like a dream. I would recommend turning this tessellation factor down though because this is a bit of a GPU hit um, for performance and if you max it out, the difference between ultra and high is negligible you don't really see it but you see the performance difference of having it set to high as opposed to ultra um, so especially if you've got a pc that's a bit more reserved in the settings um, then definitely want to do that 
Level of detail radius. Now, if you're flying in a Cessna and you're flying 9,000 feet, you really can't see it that far off to the horizon. So there is real no point in sort of maxing this level of detail to a higher setting because your plane, well, you're only going to see about 30 miles ahead of you probably. So you can actually bring that level of detail radius back a bit um, and, and preserve a little bit of your frame rate. Um, I always... Uh, use the road lights system off because I use black marble so um, I won't be using this but obviously if you don't have black marble or if you're not using Orbex global base then um, or Orbex vector I think it is sorry then you will need a night lighting system and you have a default one now that's built into the sim that looks pretty decent to be fair but um, you know it's still it, for, for a default lighting system it's pretty good um, in terms of the settings now, <clears throat> again, we're at, say, a maximum of 9,000 feet. The draw distance for your autogen doesn't need to really go out that far because, again, you're not going to be seeing out that far. Um, so you can really dial this down and then you can really increase these up. Now, having these set to dense, in version 4, if you have your sliders for trees and buildings set to dense, then in version 5, that setting to have the same amount is normal. So if you put yours on dense, in version 4, it's like putting it on very dense. So like dense is the highest you'll ever really need to go. It looks great even on dense, and um, you're not sort of maximizing or over-pumping your, your performance, like your, your, your system to perform to achieve your frame rate um, and that's and that's basically it because VFR flying visual flight rules you're going by the landscape you really do want high quality landscapes rather than say you know off to the far distance stuff which is exactly what you're going to want if you're doing an IFR flight uh, instrument flying rules means you're going to be in a commercial jet say 40,000 feet in the air um, and you know these uh, sliders here can actually come right down even to sparse um, the draw distance you can actually increase um, so it goes you know far out um, and obviously again scenery complexity always set to either very dense or extremely dense um, yeah if you're at 40,000 feet you're not going to see trees down on the ground you know at 40,000 feet so there's no point in overpopulating your world and the good thing is is that when you're at an airport the airport developer already has buildings and trees that sort of surround the airport that's not included in this slider here this these sliders only represent the landscape outside of the airports so you know if you're pumping this up and going how oh, come i don't see any more at the airport it's because the airport is determined by the add-on of the airport and not by these two sliders um Again, texture resolution, keep that at 30 centimeters. There's no point in pumping it higher. Now, mesh resolution, again, you're at 40,000 feet. You ain't gonna see crispy high you know, detail in your mountains. So you could either turn this down to like have it set to 10, or you could even go as low as 19 and you won't really see much of a difference. You know, when you're taking off right by a mountain, you'll probably might see a little bit of a difference, but then you'll soon forget that as you climb higher and higher. Um, I, do you know what tessellation factor I just always set it to high rather than maxing it out on ultra just always set it to high no matter what profile you're using like some of these you can actually keep as the same setting it's it's really more about these density sliders like these are actually pretty good settings regardless if you're doing VFR or IFR the main difference is the mesh resolution you if you're doing a low fly to the ground you do want higher quality mesh in your system um, if you're flying high not so much you know but uh, basically yeah your draw distance now if you're in a commercial jet you do want that going off to the distance because you're gonna see for like a hundred miles in your jet when it's flying higher in the air so to be honest unless you want a barren landscape out to the horizon you could actually pump this right up um, and it'll still sort of throw in the trees and the buildings um, that you'll you'll need to see so basically yeah these these are these are my recommended settings for you know 
commercial jets flying high in the sky or little props flying low in the ground. But really make your own profiles for a lot of different things. Night profiles, uh, true earth profiles, mega scenery profiles, even profiles based on planes, you know, like PMDG or Carinado. And that way you'll always obtain the whatever frame rate you want for your sim and it'll always hit that mark no matter what. Anyway, that's basically it, guys, for commercial versus Cessna. Um, and I'm going to put both of my files in my Discord in the free Flight Sim Assets channel. Just pop in, get a roll, and then grab the file. And um, I shall see you in the virtual skies, guys. Uh, next video coming up is all about my CFG files um, for P3D and volumetric clouds. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.